What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first ever Kind of Funny Games Cast, episode 164. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the Doki Doki Man himself, Jared Petty. <laughs> this shit is so dumb and I love it. <laughs> Everything we do is so dumb and we love it. Over there, the producer slash producer, Nick Scarpino. Give up on being serious and you will be liberated, my friend. Yeah, Just absolutely. don't try to do anything You remember when that again. happened for you with this job, right? There where you're just like, point. let it in, just let it go. I think yeah. it was like episode two of when you guys were like, Nick, you can start doing the morning show by yourself. And I was like, I have was all the power time now. I have all the power now. It's been a slow progression. Yeah, from there? Yeah. yeah. Now, do, do, is that progression or regression? Like is that progression? Like, okay. I actually try hard to let go of whatever preconceived notion I have of myself of being a professional because that's not fun. It's long okay. gone now. Yeah. What's fun is just being off the wall and getting your brain in that state where anything can happen because that's what I think we should be doing. That's okay. true. That's it's been I working out. Be I think so. Yeah. I enjoy it. I've gotten great feedback from people. Uh, the people that look for the morning show for real news facts are long gone. Oh, yeah, they're gone. <laughs> super <laughs> gone. <laughs> yeah, anybody wanted that, I don't know yeah. that. Uh, if you didn't know, this is the Kind of Funny Games cast. Each and every week, we get together to talk about the games we love and everything we love in video games. If you like that, head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, where a buck will get you the ability to watch it live alongside the pre and post shows. Five dollars will get you the MP3 earlier on Friday. And I just, I'm making Was this up. Is that Flintstone money? I'm like, <laughs> well, five dollars? <laughs> I'll make it up. It's Duck hard. It. Everyone Zinny. always compliments me on my intro outro skills. Yeah. Intro but it's just skills. because I've done them so many yeah. times when it's brand new. It's like, it. $10. Know. You can get the pre and post show video on demand that Friday. And if you have no money to toss our way, the following Monday it goes up as one big MP3 and video. Remember, the prices I just listed there aren't just for the show. They get early access to Party Mode, the PlayStation VR show. All sorts of cool stuff up on that Patreon page, and it lets us bring in people like Jared. Ah! Keep Nick employed. Happy to be here. We love you, and we couldn't do it without you. Are those American Badalas or Canadian Badalas? Badala, Badala. Oh, yeah. Give Badala. me one Badala. Uh, Tim Gettys. Very much alive, everybody. Yeah. Uh, hey, we're doing a special thing today. We have the one and only... Corey Barlog coming in. JK, you already came in during yeah. JC. Yeah. But we did a great God of War interview. So the idea was me and Tim were talking. We could just put that up on its own. We don't want to put up a games cast that's like three hours long because right. next week is off to PAX East. So we're running a short week anyway. Mm -hmm. We're doing a bunch of stuff. Speaking of, by the way, housekeeping, Thursday of oh. PAX East. Come to the panel, 7.30, Dragonfly Theater. Kind of funny's first annual chicken wing wing ding. Uh, B-Y-O-W, or yeah, W. The W stands for wings. Bring your own wings. Bring your own wings. Yeah, because we'll be eating wings and doing a panel for you. It'll be me, not, Andrea, not Jeff Ramsey, and Joester, Joey Noel. Rad. Uh, so we're figuring out, so what we want to do today is we're like, all right, we'll do a kicker into the God of War interview. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, but Tim, Tim, I'm doing like the e -e 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 thing with my arm, right? I want to talk about Far Cry. Yeah. And I'm going to want to talk yeah, about maybe. Far Cry, I bet, for a while. However, I don't want my impressions to be super stale. Because at this point, I've played three nights, two to three to four hours a piece. Mm -hmm. By the time we get back, I'm going to have liberated the whole map. Everything's going on. I don't, and I don't yeah. want to sound like an yeah. idiot when this goes live. Far Cry is the moment now. So what we're going to do is do a Far Cry roundtable discussion here. Maybe led by Mr. Jared Petty. Led? He says he has a bunch of questions. I do have questions. I really do. Me and the producer slash seducer, seducer a.k.a. the champ. AKA the beloved. Uh, I have been playing this game extensively, yep. doing a whole bunch of different stuff with it. So I think that's, we want to get your Far Cry impressions in here. Then, of course, tell you the episode's brought to you by Blue Apron and Hims, but I'll give you the full ad read later. And uh, let you talk to Corey, because I have some good questions, some good insight on what the game is, where it's going, that God of War, and what the future holds for it. So for now, Let's talk about Far Cry 5. Jared Petty, the Absolutely. ship is yours. All right, let's 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 start here, right here. Uh, I'm very interested in Far Cry 5's theme of theocratic nationalism. Sure. Mm -hmm. The idea behind church and state blending in a perverse way to form a cultic religious organization that appears to rule over a section of rural Montana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that you're kind of thrust into the middle of that. Now, Far Cry games have never especially grabbed me story-wise. Mm. I think they're very mm. interesting. Yeah. I, I think they're very neat games. But Can I, never, I say, and I'm not trying to suck up to our new host here yeah i agree with you okay i'm you the same way of like i don't get me wrong i so love that weird villain in far cry 4 you weren't just you weren't oh, i love pagan man pagan okay. man's great but that's mm -hmm. the thing is far cry is really good i feel at giving us memorable villains mm -hmm. but then not so much what are they up to you know yeah. what i mean like pagan man oh it's troy baker and it's a great performance and he's right. crazy and it's and i was like he was trying to take just be a warlord and then vaz right in far cry 3 yeah cool wasn't i was and like part of a ritual, so they killed all my friends, and then I had sex with a girl. Were we trying to make a, a, a all encompassing baby? I don't remember that part. I yeah. remember Vaz being a cool villain. Sure, right. That that was that was, that was kind of the 
that mirrors my experience yeah. as well. That, that's kind of where I felt. Did you feel the same way, Nick? Or did I did not play uh, the prior Far Cry games. Obviously, I've, I've seen people play Primal and things like that. I know mm -hmm. Greg played through it and loved it. Um, my my real entry into the series right now, unfortunately, is Far Cry 5. But I that's could great. Not, I think that it speaks directly opposite of what you guys are talking about. I think this story here, you, you actually end up really caring about right from the beginning because of that amazing intro scene. Ooh, well, so that's Jared. That's my question. Yeah, that's right. There. We'll get to the intro in a second. That is my question. Like, it is how much does it embrace that? Is this all previous Far Cry games as I see them where you've kind of got this neat backdrop, an interesting villain hook, and then pretty much it's a sandbox that quickly forgets about all of it? No. Or is it actually an integral part of the game? And I think both of those things, by the way, are okay if they're oh, yeah, handled totally, well. Totally. I'm just curious which way they ultimately ended up going. Uh, I think it's an integral part of the game. And I think it does. It's something that keeps you, you're constantly aware of these uh, these cultists mm -hmm. that are out in the world, uh, largely because the game does a very good job, I think, of reminding you. when Even when you start to get to a point where you're like, I'm just going to take a break real quick. Someone comes by and they're like, there he is! And they, they come to fuck with you. You're getting constant messaging that's really creepy on TVs. Mm -hmm. uh, various radio sources of like, we know we're wherever you are. We're going to come get you. Like, you can't stop this thing that's happening. Like... So you do get an impending sense of doom that I think the game is really good at setting up. Um, having said that, my only main critique of the game is also that, in that as an American, living in America, it is a little hard for me to believe that you would be that cut off in this day and age. Mm -hmm. um, although, what time period is it supposed to be happening? It's modern. It's modern, modern right? Yeah. So it's a little weird uh, that you're that cut off in this day and age that you'd have to... Uh, start a rebellion against the cult in Montana, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to just driving a couple miles the other way, and picking up the phone and calling in the National Guard. Okay, that is the only thing that you have to sort of suspend. I, as you, what's up? I think, and I, I, I hear you. Of course, I think there has to be a suspension to disbelief anywhere. Mm -hmm. I feel in the intro, and this isn't real spoilers, but I know people always get mad when I say this that. Is kind of, yeah. But like, it, it's, it's a seems, great moment. A okay, lot let's of, talk about the intro. A yeah, lot of the there. key players in the thing, uh, in the world are like hydrations, like yeah, sleeper, agents. sleeper agents. And so I think that's what they're trying to establish in the fa and like when, you know, uh, Joseph grabs you and is like, no one's coming for you. Yeah. You know, you're on your yeah. own. It's, I think the point of, and I'm sure in some of the letters or in some of the conversations I'm probably missing, just don't remember because I'm just playing it through and going, there must have been a thing of like some insinuation that the guy you would contact at the National Guard is one of his followers. Right. Like they're, I think they just want the, the disbelief you have to get is just like don't trust. You anyone. cut off at your knees. Yeah. Everybody's pretty much in on this mm -hmm. guy's side. So it's which kind of an invasion of the body snatchers type thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So is that the is that the crux of the intro? Because I've heard a lot of murmuring about the intro. The from intro people. is like fucking on another planet. Good. Yeah? Okay. Like, and I think for a Far Cry, definitely the best. Cinematic intro. I mean, cinema. I would just say cinematic. I've ever seen cutscene in yeah. Far Cry. Really? In a Far Cry. Wow. In a Far Cry. Okay, yeah. Of like again. Oh, I remember when that girl. I woke up and that girl was having sex with me and chanting stuff or whatever in Far Cry Three. Yeah. But again, and I remember when Pagan Min told me to stand there for a while and I stood there for a while and he came back. And he's yeah. like, "Oh, you stayed." And the music kicks in. I was like, "That's fucking rad." I'm gonna remember this forever. Of like, yeah, of this like you're. And no spoilers for like how it all ends up, even though like you can imagine. Yeah, I guess it's not hard to figure out yeah. where it's going on this one. Yeah. But you know, you're going in there. You're a U.S. Yeah. marshal. There's another U.S. marshal. You're in a helicopter. You're going in there uh, with the sheriff. The, who's like, like, I don't know. And the sheriff keeps trying to talk you guys out of it. Of like, yeah. you guys don't know what you're getting into. Don't fucking do this. Don't do this. No, no. We keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. We're U.S. marshals. We're America. We got this. Yeah, and you get out of the helicopter and you're like in this like creepy town and like you know he's giving a crazy the Joseph's giving a crazy sermon up there in the church and yeah. like it's super creepy and you get up there. And you serve the warrant and you get him and then all, you know, all hell breaks loose. Right. And it totally establishes, I think, quickly in the suspension disbelief way of like, you're on your own. You're stuck. Everything's fucked. Everybody's crazy. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can't mm. fight this through a traditional route. Okay. Yes. For me, that it didn't quite like, yes, the first two hours. Then as I got in my first helicopter, I was <laughs> like. I'm pretty sure I could just fly out of the shop sure. right now. And okay. this is I'm back sure to I could land thing. at a U.S. Marshal Station somewhere. And you, this is back to your point is that when... They showed Far Cry 5 and announced everything, and it's super serious, and it's this, and it's in America, and the cult, you're like, holy shit, fuck, we're really going for it this time. Mm -hmm. I remember having the conversation, probably on Gamescast, of just like, yeah, but is it just going to be the backdrop, and it's just going to be what I'm doing and running around, mm -hmm. or is it going to be leaning, and it's a different kind of Far Cry, da, da, da. It's somewhere in the middle, but more leaning towards it being a backdrop. Okay. So now, to Nick's point, in terms of being invested... Every time there's a main cutscene and I meet one of his, uh, like the, the sub bosses, the brother, right? Yeah, like brothers and sisters. Yeah, the right? brother. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, what, yeah, I haven't gotten to some of their relationships are weird. Doesn't matter. Yeah, they're all. You yeah. meet them and you get their cutscene and you're get they're baptizing people and using drugs and shit. It's like 
controller to, in my hand, but like I'm fucking focused. Like this is awesome. Okay. But then for me, and I was talking to Andrea about this on Games Daily, right? Like when I'm running into a random person and I'm meeting the over the top cook or the crazy ass preacher, and, and it's just like cool. But like I find myself actually for the first time I can remember in a game skipping, I skip skipping the where I'm just like, there's okay. a lot of them. I'm like, I want to get to taking down the cult outposts. I want to continue on filling in my resistance meter. I don't, you're just telling me, all right, this is why we got to do this, blah, blah. And it's like, all right. You want to get out there and systematically dismantle some evil and have some crazy things. And, and, it's, that, and it, that's the thing for me too, is like, sorry to interrupt you, no, but like no. to the point of like, I, once you go, okay, look, I, I, A, it's a game. B, I'm invested in the story. You do, there, there was a moment in me where I'm like, no, fuck this. I do want to take this cult down myself. Yeah. I think the game does a great job of incentivizing you to want to do that. Yeah. As a player, it strikes a really good balance of going like, I'm scared, but I also want to upgrade this gun so I can fuck up all these cult right. people. Well, let's talk about that incentivizing for a second there, because this, this is something I wonder about a lot. I've given a lot of thought to how, over the years, uh, how video games engage religion, or often how sure. they don't. Sure. Uh, religion, faith, theological themes. Mm -hmm. That's my background. Uh, it's something I care You're a lot about. It's what, yeah, it's what I went to college for and uh, what I did for a long time. And it's a very important part of life. You know, violence, sex, politics, and religion are, are kind of cornerstones of, of literature and existence. Sure. Those are what make a lot of our great stories. Um, you're a movie guy. It's what makes a lot of our great movies. Pretty much everything, yeah. Video games. Mostly violence here in the States. Ten, yeah, video games tend to shy away from overt theological themes and even from any spiritual themes. So what I wanted to ask here is, this cult, Yeah. does mm -hmm. it feel like something people would actually believe in? Does it feel like something that these people could get on board with to this point? Are there Do their actions make sense to you? Are you frightened of them because they're video game AI or are you frightened of them because they're scary? Good question. I'm I frightened because they're scary. Because I, I love, like, oh, love is a strong word. Uh, I find it very, very fascinating um, that they have, well, they do a lot of things that that is scary namely that you don't like greg brought up you have the sleeper cells you have the people who are devout followers of this that are smarter than you so you mm. get right off the bat you're set at a disadvantage which i yeah. think is really really cool um it's not believable in a sense that you don't really get exposed to the manifesto of the cults you don't huh. know what their core beliefs are right off the bat that's kind of being given to you as you're going through the story and so um, far, I feel it's very run in the mill. Yeah, right. He's mm. here to cleanse everything, cleanse everyone, and you know, it's a, yeah. my my blood and sweat, and the way he treats me is me atoning for my sins and stuff. It's just the extreme, not generalized view of a cult. And maybe as we get deeper and deeper into it, things are going to change. On. I mean, there's still okay. there's a drug infusion somewhere in there. Like it's, it definitely has a a, a psychedelic aspect to it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but what I also found was fascinating is one of the characters that you meet early on is a uh, Catholic priest and he's one of the resistance members. And so for me that hit on a note where just jokingly, I actually said to myself, I was like, I guess I'm fighting for this guy's cult now instead of the other cult. Right. Just jokingly talking about like, there's a part where you have to go liberate him from a church. Uh, you have to liberate a small town um, and he's in there. And I'm like, it, it does. I, I don't know if that was a subtle nod from uh, the game developer of saying like, hey, we're definitely going to put, I mean, it's obviously a choice that they made yeah. to put a Catholic priest as one of the leaders of the resistance. Um, but I thought that was interesting to have, but they have, have a priest with a flak jacket and a, and a machine gun right. running around. But that's to save as far people. as it's gone so far. There's not been any exploration of what, what say might define a cult from, from his religious organization or any existential questions about the differences in belief there. No, there's like nothing. I mean, no. they're not tackling that head on. It's very much like the, he, they're, you know, and it's, is it believable, right? That was a question in there. Yeah. And I, I remember when they announced this and seeing Dan's E3 pre presentation behind closed doors and talking to him about it, it was like, all right, cool. I don't think this could happen in America. And yada, yada, yada. And then like the week before we got review codes, <laughs> I started watching Wild Wild Country on Netflix, which is an amazing <laughs> documentary series. I think it's seven parts, hour long each, about this cult that popped up in uh, Oregon and started taking over a town and did take over a town and almost yeah. took over the county. And it's like, holy fuck, like that totally got me in a different mindset that when I jumped into this game, I didn't need as much of the connecting tissue because when you hear about a cult or when you hear about Waco or any of these different things, it is like, that's when you get into the realness of like, how did this start and where did it go and where did their distrust and anger and all mm -hmm. this comes from to jump into this and be very much in the role of I'm on the ground, I'm boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. I don't need it yet in terms of what's going on. Okay. okay. And I, I think, that's and I helpful. do think for me personally, the, the far cryness of it might be getting in the way of that. There mm -hmm. might be those answers because there are, you run in and there's notes you pick up and it says, you know, you read these dialogues of people being chased off and the, you can play answering machines when you get to houses mm -hmm. and bases and like go, but 
again, I'm finding them not to be very interesting. So it used to be that, oh, cool. And now it's just like, maybe there's a trophy attached to getting all this. Ah. I'm going to do it and then run away. And they do the same fucking thing I can't stand in any video game of, oh, cool. I'm going to start the message. Now I'm going to look at my map. Oh, no. When I open my screen, it stops. The, ah. I, it doesn't keep playing the goddamn recording. Why? Um, Why? I don't know, man. I, I will say this, though. Um, I, I... I think it's interesting because my exposure, obviously, to like things like Waco is you usually get brought in as a general as, as general public at the end when yeah. you're about to yeah. siege the compound. So I find it very fascinating to be at almost the starting point of like when this cult's getting that much power to the point where they feel they're ballsy enough to take down two U.S. marshals. And so that's why I think it's a pretty intense. Like that's what I like about the game. It, it again, builds that intensity. Again, for you. though, here's the other thing I want to say is I think la- if I hadn't played as much as I played last night, I wouldn't have this perspective yet. Mm-hmm. But I'm ha- I'm happy I did. You know, I've been there's three different uh, areas of the map, right? And then mm-hmm. the the Joseph's compound in the middle, and you have to take down those three bosses. You know, take over their areas, take down the bosses, then move into his area. I've been working in the basically. I guess it's the starter area. I don't it's even the remember. one they suggest. Did you they start suggest it? it? Yeah, I started cause there because you, you, the first message you get John is from Seed, right? uh, yeah, yeah, it's from someone else. That's that, that yeah, you have yeah. to go save. So you're like, okay, I guess. And that so makes I've been I've been working in there for hours and hours and hours now, and I was I still. It's a weird game because. I feel like I'm not making progress yeah. in it. Like I see the rep- reputation meter yeah. building in, but I still feel like I'm not making the big moves. And so it was starting to feel samey of like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm starting to understand and know the map I'm in, but also it's Far Cry. So yeah. I know every house kind of looks the same and certain blah, blah, blah. But I jumped into Andy's game for co-op last night and I was playing it in his game, which I have a whole bunch of different problems with. We'll get to in a second. But we started off on this other mission. We were just driving around, fucking around, and we saw uh, the giant statue, right, of Joseph. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's, it, you know, it's supposed the, to look the like homage you, to the mm-hmm. Brazil. Statue exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Rio, yeah. Uh, and so Andy and I ran up to it and we started fucking with it. And then I was like, all right, whatever. And then I went back to my game and I dro- got dropped off close again. And it queued up a mission now for me over there because like it's cues missions differently. And I was like, oh, oh no, I ran into the, the flight mission that I flew over by the, and that queued a mission for it. And then I started playing in that and started doing, blowing this stuff up. And that's a new area. New, the ne- next area run by the woman. I forget her name. Faith. Okay. Okay. Faith thank yeah. you. And have you been there yet? Not yet, no. I don't want to spoil it for anybody listening. Okay. But landing there, doing a little bit, doing the mission, it was like, and fucking around with Andy even too, and especially playing co-op where Andy was like, whoa, what the fuck? And I'm like, what? He's like, did you see? I'm like, what are you talking about? It was like, oh, okay. The areas are super different. Yeah, and okay. if I'm feeling samey in a spot, maybe I should start branching out and fucking around in other places. Excellent. I assume that would be the case because they've set that up as these people are three very distinctly different types of personality. Sure. Like I imagine hers is going to be a little more trippy. Yeah, the guy up then, north is a super militant dude, so I don't know yeah, what that's going to so be like. Gonna right? be yeah. a lot more fortified. But that actually changes the mechanics in the field. Well, of the it, game. Made it, it made it not feel samey anymore. Right. And it did all of a sudden put a new dynamic lens, whatever you want to call it, on it where I was like, oh, now I'm very interested to explore her area, but to get back and not out my area and do so on and so forth. Let me ask ahead. you this important question. Sure. How many times have you accidentally got attacked by a fucking bear? Because <laughs> that keeps happening to me for I mean, some I'm, reason. Yeah, I'm used to that. The, the worst was a turkey. A oh, turkey? I, got, oh. I shot the turkey. I got I got stampeded by a group of wild boars. Yeah. They yeah. just, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to fuck. And I was dead. One of the, I, was talk, I was talking to Andrea about this and it's, it's not, I don't want to, I don't think it's bad, but it is very much that the roaming band of cultists all over the place. Yeah. Seems a bit much, and I don't know if it's like decreased reputation if it's gonna, you know, less and less. But it was like I did a mission, great. Open my map. I'm like walked out, chill, talk, uh, look at my phone, talk to Jen, and then I'm like, oh, there he is. Oh fuck, these guys start shooting these motherfuckers in the road. Then eh, oh, the guy, and then I got a four by four. I'm like, yeah. fuck, fuck it. I killed all of them, but I'm like hanging out. I'm like, well, thank. God. And I turn around, yeah. it's a turkey. I'm like, God <laughs> damn. Yeah, and I'm like running back, and like at this point, I'm down to just bow and arrows. I'm like, oh fuck, and I'm like running trying to get this goddamn. Turkey. I love the turkey's beating the crap. Yeah, out of and it almost killed me. The bear came at me and it was just and he was down because I have a fucking awesome. Machine uh, it brings gun. back a lot of Red Dead memories. Just. Totally, t- totally, completely totally. like I was gonna say it actually yeah. feels like a GTA game when you hit like the, that star level where all yeah. shit breaks loose yeah. and you're like I'm dead I'm yeah. just gonna I'm just gonna keep shooting until they reset this. and it's and it's done an interesting thing for me of you know when I first started playing uh, Jen was like I want to watch I'm like okay cool and then she st- eventually stopped. She's like, I'm going to go do something else. This game is going to be fun to play in co-op. It's not fun to watch you play because what was happening is I was like, oh, the story mission's over there. I'm going to go. And I'd be driving and then it would just be me getting swarmed by bad guys, which eventually led to me dro- getting out of the car. And it's like, you know, I'm still super early in the game at, the, at this time. I'm still early now getting out of the car and then just running through the woods. Right. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm like, I'm getting these random encounters. Yeah. I'm meeting random people. And it was like, it was an interesting way of forcing me off the main roads in a way 
other Far Cries haven't. Even Far okay. Cry 4, it was like you drive and you see the bad guys, but you could just pull away from them and they'd eventually Now you're getting off the path. You're yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the I, they're forcing me off in a good way. I got one more question before we get to co-op. Sure. Uh, and that's a quick one. So we mentioned GTA a second ago. That's something I've really wondered about this game. So GTA manages to bring you into a video game by being parody. Mm, you put mm. you put you're in Los Santos and Los Santos is is a parodic version of LA. Mm, Everything's sure. being made fun Paired of. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and that's what I love yeah. about it. It works so well. They're making they're mocking so many things. They're making it's familiar, but it's also cartoonish, yeah. very video gamey. They do a great job with that in terms of feel. So that's one kind of take on the world. Then you go to a place like Rapture, which can't exist. But when you're there, they do a really good job of making you feel like it can. Yeah, it's a fantasy world. Like nobody could ever build this, but boy, I wish they could. Sure. Now, Far Cry's Montana, where does it fall in terms of believability? Is it America? Is it a video game arena? It, does this feel like America? Does I this feel like parody or satire? What does it feel it's like? It's leaning more to, I think, and Nikki, I want your opinion. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's it, it looks like America. Uh -huh. It at times feels like America, but I feel like we're definitely off to the parody satire side yeah. of it. Okay. And I think that's done on purpose, by 100%. the way. 100%. I think there is a level of fun that they tried to infuse with a lot of these characters by hyper realizing them okay. that I think is 100% necessary. Mm -hmm. I think it would be if everything was holy shit, the sky is falling and we're in, like we're already an impoverished group of people living in the woods yeah, yeah, yeah. and like this our life is not that great to begin with and now we got to deal with this cult. Like you you come across characters that do deal with themes like that like if you like uh with like oh, we're leaving and then they have to come to the Jesus the terms of like wait, this is our land, this is our home. Yeah. And so you want to help them liberate their homes, but there's also like American flags everywhere, bandanas. We're fucking, you know, you got mountain guns on the back, mountain guns on the back of trucks. Yeah, you got to go. You got to go get Dad's uh, big rig, right? His yeah. thing, and you go get it, and it's decked out in American shit, and it has machine guns. Yeah. on so, it. Yeah, so I mean? it's kind of GTA Five ish in that regard. Yeah, yeah. I don't okay. think it, it doesn't Not lean that hard. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? But it it does the character models and stereotypes they're playing with, and the things mm -hmm. they're doing. But, but it does. Like I say, go back and forth, right? Where there is the Steven Seagal chef who wants you to go out, and he's like, "I'm just a cook." He wants you to go out on, you know, the testicle. He, uh, what'll be great is we bring back the testicle festival, which is a real thing that happens in you know small towns all over the place. But like it, it like the whole mission's goofy, and you got to make a bull fuck, and like it's like you know what I mean. Like yeah. there's that goofy shit to it, but then there is like, all right, cool. You've come upon the uh, uh, hog farm, yeah. and they have three hostages lined up there, the different parts of the thing. You've got to get in, take down all the bad guys, but if they notice you're there, they're going to start executing hostages. Uh. And you get in there, and that's when you do play the message, and it's the guy calling in to check on his wife. Is she there? There's a letter. Like, if, you've re read, if you're reading this, we're already gone. Like, they... Balance it in a very, very really interesting good. way. Yeah. I think they do a great job of balancing. Ah, okay. I think they do a great job of, hey, it's fun time. We're doing stupid shit. Yeah. I'm flying a plane through like, you know, uh, an obstacle course, and then I'm lighting people up, and, and this is super fun. And then you do have those heartfelt moments. And that's moments. Nick, right? Yes. Nick especially, yeah. His mission very much is like, you get to him, oh, man, thanks. They stole my plane. Go get my plane. You get the plane. Yeah, he brought it back. And like, my granddad's been running this crop duster forever, but I've made modifications. It's got guns and a bomber and all this shit. And Nick's okay. very outspoken and crazy. You get there, and he's all excited to shoot and bomb shit. And then it's like, oh, they're attacking the house. Go help. My wife's there. She's pregnant and blah, 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 blah. And you kill everybody. And then you get the scene of him and his wife interacting, and she is pregnant, and she's a very not uh, sad character. She's a down to earth character. Yeah. She's a, somebody from our world almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's in there like thanking you for the help, but this shit is really bad, even though Nick's wearing sunglasses. And, being goofy. and they manage the disconnect. Like you, it feels I think so. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I mean, like I small, remember those characters, right? Small yeah. touches, right? Yeah. One of the things I liked about her character was she had the side of her head shaved, yeah. which brought her to me into now, right? Sure. That's a modern haircut that, that she would have right now mm. in America. If she were like kind of hipster living in Oregon, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I thought I was like, "Oh, that's cool. These are these are people who are socially aware. These are people who are making choices sure. for themselves and for their families that are tough choices." And I like that. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you get him as a. Uh, well, that's one of the other systems that I think is pretty cool in the game is that you get the side character that you can call in whenever you want. Right. Um, and I haven't called in him yet to do like a bombing for me, but that's coming. Yeah, that's yeah. coming. Cold. Call in the airstrike. Yeah, yeah, you can call an airstrike with yeah. him and stuff like that too. How is the co-op? Co-op's fun. I think I would have built it differently. Okay, what would uh, you change? The, uh, joining Andy's game, right? And they had said this before, but I didn't. They were like, "All right, you can join somebody's games uh, if you earn perk points in it by completing challenges or whatever. You keep them, you take them back to your game. You can customize your character that way. Or you can oh, earn money, cool. you can earn that. all that stuff. But story mission doesn't. If you do a story mission, that doesn't count for you. And I was like, okay, that's fair. But it also went as far. I didn't think about it in terms of how the game really works because uh -huh. it's you know. How do you consider? How do you think about leveling up in Far Cry or changing in Far Cry? Right, like I, I didn't. Ha I don't know. 
it's different this time around in okay. terms of like has to change i'm building towards fighting the boss of the area right uh -huh. so doing missions in there of any kind fill in the reputation meter until okay. i eventually get high enough that this guy's like well, you gotta fucking come fight me let's yeah. go fight I don't consider that story because I didn't know about it really when they said it. Mm -hmm. And so that counts as story. So me and Andy, even though I'm running around helping him doing all sorts of stuff, if, if I do the right, if, like it doesn't count towards my progression of that part. Okay. And so coming back, it was like, oh, that kind of sucks. Sure. I kept my money. Sure. I kept my perk points, but even perk points exist in a different way where you go into your map and, or your uh, journal and it's like, you know, you can you'll get a point for killing five deer or whatever and mm -hmm. skinning them and do, 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 do all this different stuff. And I was I was playing the game and having fun, but I wasn't playing the perk system smart. So you wanted it to open gates toward new encounters. I would have I would have I, I thought if, when you hear a story doesn't count, but your progression does. I'm like, oh, there's going to be an XP bar filling in that'll unlock the next whatever thing for me to do in yeah. Far Cry. And for me to jump in there, it was all right. Cool, I'm going towards more kills or whatever, and I'm getting points for playing in multiplayer, but. I should have been going in and using different weapons and doing that. I yeah. should have. All right, cool. I'm here. Whatever Andy's doing is fine. I'm going to help him with, but I need to be smart about this. It's just, mm -hmm. it's totally something I just didn't know about until I played an hour or two of it. Interesting. And okay. so now I'm like, oh, fuck. I should have played that a different way. So a public service announcement for people. Yeah, go in there right with now. mission goals. And that's been my thing with it of, I feel like I'm not making progress, right? And I, that's not why we talked about this recently I think on the games cast with your games daily with you right of like what how have us playing games changed since we were kids yeah and one of his i like to make i like to feel like i'm making progress and everything mm -hmm. so to spin my tires have a great time you know i enjoy the time i spent with andy but not progress really i was like hmm so now i need to be smart about going in and doing that it's unfortunate though because you think they could just scale it back to like if you've done a story mission and he hasn't then you go and it counts toward him Right. You'd like to think so. Yeah. It's weird that they chose not to do that because it really, that kind of really does de incentivize me to want to call you up and be like, yo, let's take down this yeah. this like compound together or yeah. let's take down, you know, John Seed's place together or whatever. Especially when it's like I feel Because that'd be really fun. Me, It'd be awesome to have you on my story missions. For me account. personally, right, and this is just based on previous experience, I guess. When I think of Far Cry, I think of it as it's a single player experience. Mm -hmm. I want to play through the zone because it is like, you know, we rolled up on a, it's Andy's game, but we roll up on a compound and we're going to take it down. And I'm like, all right, cool, Andy. Hi. Oh, you're just shooting everybody. Uh -huh. It's like, yeah. How do you? And I'm like, I go in, I try to be Stealth dead enemy. quiet. I don't want any, I, I love when I finish it and it's like liberated, no alarms. I'm like, fuck yeah. But well, you get no alarms, you also get a perk for uh, not being seen. Which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Which I got, well, I got once. Yeah. Which but I, was, I was like happy with. Because <laughs> yeah. it was the best, one the time, the time ever. He sent it. Fucking Rambo in there. I was like, K -k 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 -k. what do you think then, Nick, about the way you're unlocking and upgrading weapons, right? Because it's different this time around. I, I, as yeah. I talked about it before, hey, hey, Far Cry 3, right, Jared? I'm gonna, I want a bigger bag for whatever, a bigger quiver, whatever. I'm going to yeah. go kill X number of sharks, and I'm going to shark skin You're going to build me a shark bag. Exactly. Yep, it right. doesn't work that way this time, okay. right? But how's it work now? Where you're going out, you're killing animals, you're skinning them, but then those skins, rather than be applied to a craft thing, you're coming back and selling them at the shop oh. to get money to mm -hmm. then buy new things from the shop. So you're effectively just farming gold. Yeah. Okay. And there are, you still craft a bit. It's kind of confusing, but it's way scaled back. So now it's like you're crafting uh, Molotov cocktails or this, uh, you know, like grenades or mm -hmm. not, maybe not grenades, but something to that effect where it's not, I'm not crafting arrows. I'm crafting like throwables, consumables by picking up fasteners and all these different tool parts. Now that's very appealing for me, actually. I tend to prefer gold farming crafting yeah. to waiting for item drops. Yeah. So actually this is, this is maybe good news for and, me. And, I liked it a lot too, because night one was, oh, okay, I wrap my head around how this works, and every you know main place has a shop, and you go to the shop, you can go in there, you can go down, buy the gun you have to have it, and once you buy it, it's unlocked. Yeah. So that if I throw it down into the mission and pick up just the ore, mm -hmm. whatever, when I come back, it'll I can just click on mm -hmm. it and not pay for it. Right. But also what I'm doing is I'm buying that gun, and then I can go in and buy the extended mag, and buy the hollow scope, and buy you know all these different things to make the gun feel like my own paint jobs. Yeah. And so I can come back and get that again and go with it. And it's just mine. I go there, I pick it up. It's always waiting. And I and I d I dig that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's I I really do like that thing, and I do like the idea of now it's it, I don't know. It's one of those. It's so weird because I haven't played Far Cry really since four. Like mm -hmm. I touched Primal, but didn't stick around that long. Uh, I feel like it's more like, okay, cool. What mission am I about to do? Okay, I'm going to take down this cult thing. Let's so I'm going to go guy. to the store and build the loadout wheel the mm -hmm. way I want it to and have that gun and then go do it. Yeah, so you and I are polar opposites on this. <laughs> I, I, by, by the way, I agree that the system's way easier to navigate than the things that you were talking about before. Um, I don't like overly complex crafting systems. Yeah. And I don't like feeling like I have to be on a collectathon to find that fucking branch that's going to get me that thing that's sure. going to be on my thing. I haven't literally, 
and this is going to make me sound completely stupid, maybe seen that second wheel with all the stuff that you can craft, like all the potions, not potions, but um, like the bliss things. Dynamite stuff, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 not the dynamite. There's another wheel where oh. like, you can combine oh, all the of homeo, the... Oh, uh, yeah, the homeo, whatever. The, hol- yeah. the holistic things yeah, over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to that wheel twice. I have I never like, used it. There's a holistic yeah. medicine wheel? <laughs> there I knew. is another... Yeah, there is... There's, there's a trophy for using it 20 times, and I'm like, I guess I'll explain what that means later. I didn't yeah, know. so oh, apparently you can do like bliss. <laughs> you can do all sorts of like... not I want to say potions, but like mixtures of plants and different things that you find. So there's where the crafting is. make you make you do something else. I've been to that once, and I was like, nope, not going to do That's where the crafting is. And granted, the game's good about not... You don't have to do that stuff, yeah. right? You don't Obviously. have to do the thing where you're going to run around and it's going to make you like you beef you up and shield. I hate that stuff because it doesn't play into the strategy of how I play the game. Thing number one for me is I was like, I got to find the perk that gets me one more gun. Yep, me too. That is th- that is first and foremost. It was I think it was four perks that you needed for it, and it got me that, or maybe it was six, and it got me that perk extra points, perk points rather. It got me that extra slot in my inventory. Mm-hmm. That's where the sniper rifle goes. Mm-hmm. The sniper rifle gets a scope. The sniper rifle gets uh, the silencer, uh-huh. and hope to God. You know, and God, bless, thank you guys for doing this. It doesn't take any of their accuracy or damage down. Sure. It actually increases it. Boom, we're good to go. I get the machine gun that you started the game off with. Yeah. Deck that thing out. Silencer, pistol, silencer. I'm done. I don't yeah, need yeah. guns for the rest yeah. of the game. See, money the just goes in the bank. It sits there for a nice investment fund later in life. The only thing, <laughs> the only thing different we do is I don't do the sniper. I do the bone arrow. Because the bone arrow is silent, and I can pick the arrows back up sometimes. Oh. It's actually, and believe it or not, it's crazy because I think your your silencer is not a hundred percent silent. Yeah, I think if mm-hmm. someone's near the other person, they're like, "What was that?" Well, yeah. even if Which they see smart. it, arrow got, go through the guy's head and him fall, they're like, "Whoa!" Yeah. No, like, they, yeah, yeah, Which exactly. you, one would do? Yeah, if exactly. Arrow, exactly. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah, so I look. That's how I play the game. Is I try. I, I'm those first few perk points. I'm like, it's like decision paralysis. I'm like, I got to be smart about this because I know how I want to play this game. I don't want to play this game as like a hunter gatherer. I want to play this game as a like ex navy seal spec ops sniper that's going to systematically pick these people apart. So there's a role playing element to it for you. Um not that much though. No? I mean cuz like really the only other g- weapon that I could have is the bow and arrow that I've come across and I yeah. just oh, okay. I don't like that. I'm not that good with it. I like to spray and pray. And just sure. get in there and get out. I yeah. love talking yeah. about games in early stages like this. I'm actually really excited you guys haven't gone farther than you have and I'm actually honestly very grateful right now that I haven't played it yet. Yeah. This is one I is a must play for me. Sure. I actually wrote you last night. It's like, "Hey, you got codes." Oh, yeah, got um but uh <laughs> but uh didn't get to cuz I didn't I'd, I'd forgotten that I was going to be here this afternoon until yeah. right around then. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> thank you for remembering. Yeah, I should have probably jumped in and played that. Um, but it is exciting to hear in these early stages. I'm going to be interested to see what your impressions are. Me a week too, because it's the same thing of I'm playing it and I'm like kind of feeling the same, whatever, blah, blah. But then it's also like, I can't wait to get home and play more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I know it's, you know what you're getting and I can't wait to just go back and get more of that. But then it is the last night when I finally got done with Nick's story missions and just had his plane. I was like, cool. Now I'm just going to spend, I probably spent, you know, 15, 20 minutes just going around the map mm-hmm. trying to find all the red mm-hmm. uh, f- fertilizer things to shoot. Just jacking them yeah, up. Yeah, just blow That's them smart. all up and get done with it. See, yeah, my, my prediction for myself is that I will beat this game, but I will quickly approach a point where I'm like, screw side missions. I'm not doing any of these sure. anymore. Mm-hmm. Sure. If I always, I'm very aware of games like this where I hit that tipping point where I'm like, I'm powerful enough. It's time to go. Yeah. Because yeah, I, sure. I just, Daddy there's just so much it. to do in this that I know that if I keep not thinking about what I'm doing next, I will burn out on it and I will not want to come back and to it. And nothing wrong with that. I, say, I mean, I, I I like to paraphrase Chris Kohler, uh, who said once uh, something to the effect of, I, I love this, he said that inside every good 20-hour video game, there's a great 10-hour video game. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of truth to that. Sure. So when you pare down your own experience, when a game allows you to do that mm-hmm. and just get to the stuff you want to, I'm all very appreciative of that. Well, thank you for leading this discussion. Well, thank you for doing all the work. All you I recommend people play Far Cry 5? I do indeed. Yeah, I do too. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm interested to hear your opinions, and I can't wait to get to that third area and see what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I also hear through the grapevine, pretty attainable platinum trophy. Not, uh, not too much work for you on that one, so get on that one for you. Everybody. Maybe it'll be my first. Not a chance. <laughs> uh, before we get to Corey's interview about God of War and all sorts of stuff, and if there's a future in it, let me tell you about our two sponsors. I'm going to start with Blue Apron. I don't even really need the paper for this. I use Blue Apron all the time, each and every week. Three meals get delivered to my house with pre-portioned ingredients, step-by-step instructions. Jen and I cook them. We have a good time and make delicious food. Uh, Nick? Yes. I sent you one of my free meals for Blue Apron. You did indeed, and it arrived two days ago. Did you enjoy it? I did. Right? It was very. It was nice. What I like about Blue Apron, as I've said before, is I like it as somebody who likes to cook. And there's Jared. You know, on a Sunday, I'll wake up and I crack open a whole bunch of cookbooks and yeah. try to get crazy. I like being able to come home and not have to think that hard mm-hmm. when I'm exhausted. You come home, the thing's there, it's 30 minutes, 45 minutes of step by step by step, do this, assemble that, blah, and I make something great. And I learn how to make something new and do all this different stuff. Of course, 
they have a you know a satisfaction guarantee and all that jazz so if you don't like it but you need to jump in and try it so we've talked about blue apron a lot blue apron is offering our listeners 30 dollars off your first delivery that's pretty great if you ask me so go check out this menu and get 30 dollars off at blueapron.com slash gamescast that is 30 dollars off your first order at blueapron.com slash gamescast blue apron a better way to cook high quality ingredients easy instructions what's not to love Nick. Yes. Next sponsor, Hims. I'm glad I'm on the show. Me too. Yeah. You. We've talked about Hims before. I've done about it. I always talk about you using it or you know setting up the process. Right. I don't think you've gotten your product yet. Right. Not just yet. No. But the process is very simple. I mean, obviously these they're they're selling. Wait. What uh, is Hims? Uh, for Hims is a uh, uh, a website where you can go to and get uh, products for hair loss, uh, skin care, skincare and sexual wellness. Oh uh-huh, yeah. Which uh, I'm happy to report I don't need yet. But if I did. I know where to go for that. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's a very easy process. You go, they have they have individual products that you can buy, or you can buy them all in, in one set, uh, which includes a shampoo, uh, minoxicillin, I believe it is, uh, and then uh, some vitamins, and also a, a prescription for finasteride. I know what you're thinking to yourself. Hey, don't you need a doctor for prescriptions? Well, they got that covered, too. You can go, you fill out a medical form, you take pictures of your hair, and it, it goes to a doctor who will evaluate that for you and give you a prescription for that. I, I, whenever I talk about you with it, I like the idea of them taking photos. I like the idea of them having someone who's consulting with you personally. And, and they're not screwing around either because I took a photo and they and they got back to me and said we need another one. Really? Yeah, we want ah. they want a photo of the back of my head, the front of my head and they and it was like they want better lighting on it so they can actually <laughs> see. Which I was like I respect that because I don't, you know, these are things that you 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 want to make sure is on the up and up. You want to sure. make sure you're being healthy about and you want to make sure that this is a, you know, you're something inge- you're ingesting. So, you want to make sure there's a professional out there who can guide you through that process and they do a good job of that, I think. Okay. Order now, my listeners. Get a free trial. Nope, that's right. A trial month for him for just $5 today right now while supplies last. See the website for full details. That would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or pharmacy. So don't get a get a trial month of four hymns for just $5 today. Uh, go to fourhims.com slash gamescast ed. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash games. No, gamecast ed. I screwed this up a lot of times. G-A-M-E-C-A-S-T-E-D. Gamecast ED for hymns.com slash Gamecast ED. Nailed it. Crushed it. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about God of War with Corey Barlog. As I live and breathe, Corey Barlog. Hello, sir. Hello, how are you? Very good. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for coming by. Oh, this we're is recording fun. this at the end of GDC week. Yes. Almost. Yes. You're, I'm sure, exhausted. You just put up a tweet of you holding the gold disc. Yes. Yeah. So your baby's done. Yes, so exciting. Very, very exciting. Here's where I want to start. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. You've made me give a shit about Kratos. Ah. That, well, you Thank know you, Kevin. Yeah, for everyone out there. that's where, You know what? It's funny. Uh, I was telling Aram on the, uh, the, the way over here. Big Aram over there, yeah, PR Aram guy. Aram come there. on, come on over Aram here, Aram. Walk on through the back. Aram. Come on. He's not moving. <laughs> He's coming. Come on and Aram, say hi. Aram, everybody. Come on and say hi. Aram, Aram, Aram ladies and gentlemen. Aram, of course. Fantastic friend of Kind of Funny. Right. And Greg Miller. We, you, you might have seen him a long time ago on Up at Noon talking about Atlas. Yeah. And then he immediately was like, peace, Atlas. Went to PlayStation. <laughs> now he walks through every so often, does And now he walks through and <laughs> yeah. does a, a walk on. It's fantastic. So I was telling him on the way over. Yeah. Uh, in 2016, we did the, the gameplay reveal. Mm-hmm. And I was doing some behind closed doors talks. And they told me before the talk that you and I think Colin were coming I remember in him. Yeah, yeah. To, to do uh, the, the behind closed doors. And I was like, oh, I knew actually you guys were not the greatest. We, were, War we were never got yeah. a war. I mean, yeah. we. Yeah, in, okay, yeah sure, I, sure, sure, sure. It's totally good. It's Gameplay totally was good. always tight. Yeah. Gameplay was always tight. Nobody ever argued that. But I, I was like, oh, this is good, yeah. right? Because I, I I wanted to see if I could convert, right? And yeah. I didn't know if I was going to be able to convert you in that room, sure. right? Yeah, yeah, your first at bat, that's going to be tough. Yeah, that was yeah. Uh, that was ambitious, but I still, I'm shooting for the moon, man. Yeah, of course. And uh, I remember watching your guys' coverage afterwards where you guys said, it was weird. It felt like he was talking directly to us. Yeah. And that's because I was. <laughs> I was literally playing to both of you. I think you were on opposite sides of the room. Sure, too. we like to divide yeah, and conquer. You, you did not want to sit close no. to each other, and I was literally going bouncing back and forth to each one of you guys, and just really giving that impassioned, like, yeah. please Making care, eye contact. Yeah. please yeah. care. Yeah. And I think you know what? Maybe that eye contact. I think it worked. Yeah. Also, you kissed me on a live stream once. Yeah. So you know, and worked. you know what I gotta say? You never called after that. Yeah, well, I, I mean, people were intimidated, right? Right. You uh, have a family. Right. I'm getting choked up. <laughs> oh. 
That's all right. This is an emotional podcast for an emotional game. I sneeze weird. Sorry you about do that. S- that was your normal sneeze? No, that was me dialing it back as much as possible. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, like, good. I sneeze. If I'm going to sneeze... It was a very European sneeze. You're... I like it. How so? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, they, they must dial it back. They're trying to be polite. You, right. I'm going to put a kink in my neck doing that because I'm, I'm holding them in because right. usually it's loud. You Kevin, should've... do I sneeze loud? Yeah. Thanks, Kev. You shouldn't hold it back. I think that could injure you. We're just looking at your house. I don't want to ruin See, the interview for you. You know what I mean? That's that does not ruin the interview. That just shows me that you're a human being. Oh, thank you right? so much. Okay, so, yeah. And I appreciate that. Well, I'm glad you did that. I'm glad you know you follow the product enough to know how Colin and I feel about everything. But I'm glad yeah, totally. that after playing this preview event that I left and I was talking to people and like I keep bringing up the fact of you know that first real fight, best superhero fight that's ever been in a video game. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And But more than that, and it gets hard because I don't want to spoil things for people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More than that is that you left these breadcrumbs in that first two and a half hours to where I'm still sitting there going like, why? Why? Yeah. Why? why? Like, like I'm, I want to know more about the stranger. I want to know more about these trees. I want to know more about what the plan was, what the plot is, where we're going. And that's like unheard of for God of War for me, for me. Oh, that's, that's awesome. I mean, that was honestly the goal. I had some incredible writers to work with on this and it was years and years of constantly revising. When you know? did you start on this project? Uh, I came back in um, July of 2013. Hmm. So I started thinking about it uh, probably in April okay. of 2013. and started processing what I was going to do. But when I came back, it was me and a small group of people for about uh, a year. So about 12 of us for a year. Okay. And we were expecting another year to kind of get ready for pre-production and we're told like two weeks beforehand that everybody on the team was going to be joining us and that we had to get it together in two weeks. Uh, so that was... Giant sweat drop. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was honestly the worst for me. Uh, it was great to be able to start on something, but truly that like arriving at school to do a speech naked, you know, <laughs> going up on stage and you don't know even what play you're Why doing. Why the fast track? Uh, was when we had the cancellation of the project. So mm-hmm. we kind of needed to sort of restructure and sure. redirect. And, uh, so no big deal. It's just all no, the studio's yeah. hopes were pinned yeah. at you. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No yeah. no pressure whatsoever, man. Yeah. I like pressure. I eat it for breakfast. It's all good, yeah. right? But no, that, I lost some sleep, man. Sure. Uh, for years, really. Yeah. Do, are you catching up on it yet? No. No? Okay. No, no, no. I when, slept five hours last night because I'm an idiot. Okay. And I went out. And I sure. kept saying, you know what? We should keep going out, right? Uh, well, you know midnight. how it is. You're at GDC. Right. I haven't seen these people in forever. We're all in one place. When am I going to get to go to dinner with X, Y, and Z? And right. then it just becomes, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's like I literally don't ever to get out of the cave, right? Yeah. That I'm literally locked in the room. So when I get out here, I'm like, oh, I can somewhat be social. I don't usually like to be social anyway. But for some reason, San sure. Francisco and GDC brings it out of me. Well, it's because everybody's at as we're all the same awkward nerd. Right. And now we all true. get to hang out and go to do things. And go be awkward. Yeah, in, exactly. In, in together. Public. Right. That's, that's just what all it's of us the awkward nerds together. Yeah, it's exactly. beautiful. Now, you bring up an interesting point here. We're oh, talking good. about being awkward. Mm. What I want to call out is, of course, the fact that you, you go to your cave, you work on this game, you do all this stuff. You look better than you've ever looked in your career. Oh. And I say that as somebody who's followed your career, interviewed you a lot, been around you a lot. You're a sweet man. Like when you pop back on the scene, I was like, who is this guy? Too stylish. All right. These glasses, huh. the hair, the beard, this you're wearing a Henley? Like, I don't I, know you anymore, man. Right. I don't know you. I, I, Ram, I, remember when he didn't look good? He, right. he looks way too good now, Ram. Well, this is that's wonderful because I felt like I still don't look good. Uh, you look great. Uh, unrested uh, uh, perpetually. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's uh, age is working for me finally because I just was, <laughs> I had that horrible awkward period from about four years old to about 40. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'm sort of pulling out of that. Sure. Right? Sure. Yeah. Pulling yeah. out of the nosedive a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's nice. Thank yeah. you for that. You're welcome. I want you to know that. Uh, what's it been like seeing all these previews about God of War because everybody's in I haven't seen anybody saying they're not into it but it's I feel like I'm in the upside down you know <laughs> like it's it's awesome and I don't say that like as a disrespect thing but more like we had a lot of hopes right yeah. we worked really hard and, and we want people to like what we do but uh, there's always that voice in the back of your head that says you know be real sure right like don't you get know, your hopes up don't get your hopes up yeah right, right? Uh, and it is yeah it's almost like so positive you're you're wondering what's going to I'm about When's to get the punched shoe? in the face, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. There, is, there is the impending face punch, but that's my pessimistic side, I think, just of speaking course. up. I think the testament to the team and how much they put into this game, like I feel like they deserve so much of it. How big is the team on it? <clears throat> uh, at its peak was like 300. Okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah, it was, and we 
worked with two, two other developers outside as well. So we were kind of expanding out. This is the literally the biggest thing we have ever done by a Swedish mile. Like, it's just ridiculous. Right. You guys keep talking about it, right? Like, or I keep seeing kicked around. What is it? 30, 35 hours is what, like, yeah. we're kicking around for how yeah, long yeah. it's going to take. The, one of the systems designers just did his full playthrough uh, to get 100%, right? So that's yeah. literally doing every single thing in the entire game. And he played 43 hours. 43 hours, and he knows what to do. Yeah, he knows right? exactly where yeah. to go and what to get. And he did a lot of the the sort of exploration content and the sort of uh, engagement outside of the, the core story. So he had not seen a lot of the core story stuff. Um, that part was new to him, so that took a little bit, but everything else, like, that's still pretty impressive considering he knew what to do. Exactly, so. yeah. It's definitely uh, larger than I intimated in the beginning of the game. I was like, oh, it's not that big. Don't worry about it. Right? Yeah, yeah, You yeah. spend that entire time in the beginning. Don't, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I pitched one of the environment artists, or I would do these pitches, right, these, like, two-and-a-half-hour speeches where I would verbally walk people through the entire story of the game, and I did that for, like, a year to different groups, right? Yeah. And at different stages, and... One of the environment artists had missed one of it. So I was like, oh, you and a couple of people can come in. I'll just do it special for you guys. And we broke halfway between because uh, it's that freaking long that somebody had to take a bathroom break. Yeah, uh, yeah. And he just he was sitting in there and he goes, this is cool. Uh, how many other teams are we going to get to do this? Because this is ridiculously large. I'm like, really? You're the first person to say that. <laughs> and I think I just deflected for several years and just yeah, pretended. Yeah, nah, it's not, right, it's not nearly right. as bad as you think it's going to be. Right, and then I would deflect it in the way of saying, like, I'm so worried. I don't think the game's going to be that long. And then we did our first sort of full game play test. And yeah. It took five days, and we were like, oh, man. All right, <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> so ha was it a decision internally? Was it a decision from PR hacks like a rom? Did it come from somewhere else? Aram is lovely. I love Aram. It's a joke. We keep saying his name because we love him so much. Is it a... You guys haven't shown <clears throat> much of this game. Mm. Like, you, it's it feels like we've been talking about God of War for a long time, yeah. that we saw the debut trailer, he doesn't touch his back, you're a jerk Kratos. But playing through it, even, like, the way... Literally, that's the way I would describe it to people as well, initially. Like, he doesn't touch his back, he's a jerk Kratos. Like, exactly. And exactly. they're like, oh, I get it. Of course. Oh, yeah. but oh, he's showing... You get Even me. just bringing the hand up, he's showing more dimension than he right, did in the last right? four games. Yeah. Uh, did you, and I know there's more than four games. I'm gonna change it. I gotta get there before the YouTube comments get there. Right, they're three gonna be like, ones. You're forgetting the betrayal. Ones, we got, you know, I always yeah. remind people of betrayal. Right? Yeah, that was the yeah. phone game. That was the flip phone game. Yeah, yeah, the right? old, the old one. So yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, was that a decision internally that you think the brand is strong enough that you can show the one ma major section? Because even playing it, it started in a way where I was like, oh. There is an answer to a question I, I wasn't sure how we were going to get to. And then I played through what was the you know first footage and all that stuff. But even that then escalated into brand new sections, which then moves me to a different section, which then shows me different. And it's, there's so much in this game that even in two and a half hours, I know I didn't scratch the surface of it yeah. for how long the game is. But also, I'm just like, I don't know where this story is going to go. And I love that. Uh, I would like to say that it was super calculating on every aspect. Yeah. But uh, we made all the aspects of the game from the start so we didn't start with an engine and then design and then build mechanics and then build levels yeah. based on those mechanics we did everything at the same time so we were constructing the engine while designing the mechanics while building the mechanics while building the ability for the characters to move and reimagining the combat system uh, i highly recommend never ever doing it that way <laughs> it was literally a, a you know 150 people screaming at each other waiting for like, I can't do what I can uh, yep. I need to do until he finishes his work like uh, 15 bottlenecks of yeah, every department yeah it was, it was hardcore other. right we wanted to make it as hard as we could on ourselves uh, and part of you know not showing a lot was that we just we literally didn't have a lot to show like nothing was in the state to show that E3 2016 thing that was deliberate right that yeah. was the more like I felt if we were gonna reveal this it couldn't be like a, a title Right, like, hey, the the traditional sort of format is like you reveal the, the 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 title screen, and then you reveal a teaser, and then you reveal gameplay, right? Yeah. And it's like spread out over like a year, year and a half. And I uh, was having a, a meeting with the the PR groups uh, who handle E three, and we were talking about like, hey, we should you know do a live gameplay demo, and they're like, oh yeah, that sounds great, and I'm like, oh. All right, yeah, I think I, we can do that. I didn't think they were going to agree. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I kind of was sort of like, oh, I'll suggest it. So it makes me look like I want to give a lot. But yeah, they yeah. agreed. And then <clears throat> as a joke, uh, I had said, you know, we should play it to live music. 
right? We should have Bear do the, the score to yeah, that yeah. thing. And they're like, oh, that's crazy. And one of the other persons setting it up uh, was actually intrigued by that. And they came back after that and said, no, we really want to do this now. And I'm like, what have I got myself yeah, into? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But that showing was meant to be like, look, we need to make the biggest splash. We need to just go out there and just show everything we possibly can instead of intimating, oh, Kratos has changed and let everybody speculate. And I was just like, here it is, every single thing. Right. Uh, so that was a that was a big deal. And then as it went further on, it was mostly just we needed time. So we couldn't do anything. We couldn't show anything. We sure. didn't want to talk about anything because we just were heads down for years trying to get this thing done. Reaction from all the people who've played it, like I said, it's been super, super positive. I have seen people popping up in our comments or on my Twitter, right? Yeah, yeah. Not being a mean, but like flabbergasted that there's no jump button. Yeah. And that the, anchor, the camera's anchored in a way that it just seems stiff and rigid and all stuff. Yeah, and I've done so my best weird. to talk to them and stuff, but yeah. were you expecting that? Did you think that people would be so tied to what God of War's been in the past that they would look at this and be like, wait, even at a glance, I'm confused? Uh, the jump button, yeah. Uh, because honestly, that one gave me a lot of pause in the beginning when we did our you know breakdown and we just... Uh, we literally wrote up on a, a board every aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. So like in the first few months, everything like the jump button, the double jump, the the magic, uh, sure. specials, you know, every aspect we could think of listing it out. And then we kind of go one by one and ask it to be defended, right? Mm -hmm. Is this God of War? Is this a load-bearing wall for this franchise? Why? And is there any way we can expand upon it? Mm -hmm. And the camera was such uh, a, an important thing for me to say, uh, as a player, I want control, right? Uh, Funnily, as a director, I totally want control as well, which is why I like the fixed cameras, because yeah. I want to control where you look. But as a player, I want to control where I look. So I sort of, well, I beat myself and uh, the player myself beat the director myself. And uh, we were able to get the movable camera that started like a lot of decisions after that. So the jump was basically a, well, we we have a huge challenge to get a camera like that to work with a jump, to work with the combat system that we're talking about. And it can be done, absolutely. Many sure. other games have done it, but we're talking about building everything from scratch. So it's like, all right, well, maybe we don't take that problem on because we can probably do something that feels a little bit more grounded. We started talking about, well, Kratos is older. We do want to make a more deliberate combat. Uh, and we started realizing, okay, this actually is a cool thing. Like yeah. It's actually an interesting choice as opposed to a limitation. So I think, you know, it's the same thing when people say, oh, I can't, where's Square Square Triangle? Why can't I have the face buttons? I don't want that. Can I remap it? And it's like, yeah, I mean, we offer it. There's a, an ability in the game to remap to face controls. Uh, but I, we have noticed in the playtest when people do it, after about 20 minutes, they realize this doesn't work. Right, because <laughs> your, your hand is hovering <laughs> over the analog stick. Like yeah. it is all about looking around everywhere, and if you're going like this every time to do the combat, it sure. doesn't feel very good. But we wanted that option, right? We want if people want to play that way, like that's awesome. I agree with you, and I I, I I only went in there to change. I was trying, I'm trying to remember. I went in there looking to change my controls after we had been playing for a while, and it wasn't because of the attacks. It was I want to say because of throwing the axe. You is wanted, it? Uh, I think it, I was. I was going. I was going L two, thinking it would aim or something, and it was actually L one. There's L1, something L one's block, so we kept that one as sort of the anchor point from the previous gotcha. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, it was kind of that classic sort of shooter vibe. Yeah. So you have that sense where your hands are sort of hovering over L two. That is your your sort of reticle yeah, iron yeah. sights mode, and then you have access to your heavy and light, uh, and then you have heavy and light out of aim, heavy and light in aim, and it gives you kind of that faster feel. Yeah. Uh, well, that what, to what you're saying though is what, exactly what I found where I tried to switch it to get block, I guess, down to the shoulder button. I wanted it for some reason. I forget what. And then when you're I, crazy. I'm crazy. Yeah. And when I went back and did it, I was like. No, this doesn't yeah, work. I'll get used to it. Work. I just need to learn to play God of War with this thing. But it wasn't the attacks. I thought the attacks made sense there. And people, I thought it people wanted to switch the circle and, and, and X buttons as well. So Oh, really? So you'd be, yeah, so you'd the, be you'd mantling be, and hopping over things? You do, yeah. do it now with circle. They yeah. want it with so X. They would, so we offered both of those options as well, just because it was fairly equally divided. You know, yeah. Initially, we kind of made a choice. And then as we started playtesting with a bunch of people, we realized, oh, wow. Actually, a lot of people want this. Uh, Horizon actually had the evade on the circle. So yeah. they were saying, no, you like evade on circle. Yeah. Uh, we were having, I think, the, the jump on X in the previous God of War game. So yeah. we sort of used that as our evade base. But I like the idea that we can actually go in there and let people kind of figure the way want. they want. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely has makes sense what you want. And what I liked about it and what I've been trying to explain to people, right, when I talk, when they bring up that, oh well, it feels rigid, it doesn't do this, or that they don't like, they don't like the kid. I'm like, you don't even know the kid yet. Right. Okay, whatever. What I like about it is with the camera tight the way it is, and the way combat is meaningful, not yeah. slow because that's not what I mean, but you know what I mean, impactful, yeah. and I'm moving. 
I found it so helpful when Kratos' son is screaming out, behind you, yeah. left. And it was like, oh, right, the way the camera's anchored on me, it was, it was actually reminding me a lot of Hellblade, where in Hellblade, you yeah. have to constantly be looking behind you because they want you in, on, on your toes that yeah. way. But this one was the exact same thing of, yeah, you need to be aware of your surroundings, but we know we're making it not the way you'd normally do it in a God of War yeah. game. And yeah, so part like, of the game was putting the onus on the player for sort of battlefield awareness, Yeah, right? Yeah, to yeah. say... Uh, the common designers and I kind of went back and forth a lot on the camera distance because initially they wanted kind of the uh, the AC Batman farther away, right? Sure. See everything. Uh, and I was like, you know what? I think we can do something interesting if we push it in. And so it was this constant sort of, we want to know. I don't want to push it in. I don't want to push it in. <laughs> and finally, the, the lead combat designer, Jason McDonald, just got so frustrated with me. He just said, look, you need to go away for two days, right? I'm going to play around with this stuff. I'm going to analyze each aspect of it. And then I'm going to come back with what I think is the recommendation. Then we can have an informed discussion about this because you're annoying the hell out of me. Yeah. So then I proceeded. You annoy I know, right? No, uh, why? But I proceeded to annoy him for two more days. Okay. I did not leave him alone. Good, good job. Yeah. That's, you can't, Way to listen to your team. Yeah, I'm really good at that, right? They would totally agree with that. Uh, <laughs> or else. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I came back out of the two days, and he kind of didn't say anything initially. We're standing at the desk. He's like, mm -hmm. all right, so you're all going to laugh because I found out that closer than any of us wanted is actually cooler. And I was like, oh, my God, I think I love you. Uh, and, and he's like, let me explain. He's like, nobody's really doing it at this distance, right? And it's kind of forcing this interesting sort of cerebral tick that makes you kind of go like, I got to pay attention to all the enemies around me. Yeah. So if they start moving over yeah. to the left, I need to make myself more mobile. I need to be moving, and then I can rely on Atreus, who actually will give you indications, right? And then yeah. after that, we added the little... Uh, sort of off-screen indicator, yeah, yeah, right? Because we had projectile characters, so it has different colors for that. Uh, some people have commented on that as well. Can I turn it off? Yeah, totally. We have a bunch of stuff that you can actually control in the UI, yeah. right? Uh, people see the, the footage and go like, oh, those health bars for the enemies, right? I was one of the first people to kind of say, like, I don't want health bars for enemies. But as is the best part about working with the team, you know, the combat guys had some really cool ideas and they put together a pitch, brought me in a room and expected me to tip over the table and throw some chairs and get super sure. angry about this. And I played it for like 25 minutes and I was like, this is, this adds this level of strategy yep. that we've always been lacking, right? Like we're incorporating the strategy for the battlefield awareness. But the, the knowledge of that enemy has 50% health. This enemy is a level four, but he's got 100% health. I need to focus on him, mm -hmm. right? I need mm -hmm. to prioritize. And it became a lot more engaging for players because of that. So you can turn those things off. But I think when people play, they'll realize that it makes it much harder. Well, it was, yeah, it, it, it's good information. What I liked about it was showing me how close they were to being stunned. Right, yes. so if I wanted to go over there and tear them in half or whatever, use yeah. that ability, I was like, oh well, I need to know that. And that You're a big was big fan of the stun. Big fan of the stun. Like yeah, I, yeah, and I wouldn't have expected that because like that was the thing even with the game of the way. I mean, I've said it in previews before, so, I, so sorry to bore everybody, but just to, just to let you know how good you're doing. Oh, the first man. time when you throw the axe and it's like, oh, now hold triangle to bring it back. And it comes back and it, it does. And I was like, oh, my God. How satisfying oh, is that, right? And I was like, I, yes, give me 35 hours of yes. this. Yes. But then it, it does become, okay, cool. I'm going through. I'm attacking. I'm throwing. I love it when I throw it and then forget about it. And then I'll shoot, I will get it. I got to get it back to go do something else. But I'm fighting and I'm doing all these different things. And then adding in the thing, okay, okay, now you've gotten your feet wet with that. Let us explain stun now, right? Because it yep. gets introduced a ways in of you playing through the first uh, hour and a half or two hours. Uh, it gets to get it shown up there and then see that, okay, now you, this is how you're going to use it to tear people apart or do this different thing. It gets yeah. Spartan Rage going again. It's like, oh, like, that's awesome. And again, to think about how far that's going to go and the fact that in that two and a half hours I didn't get another weapon right I was just the ice my ice axe and my shield yep. but then you know you're running into uh, the blacksmith who's an amazing character and I can't wait to Brock. Like, I can't wait to hang out yeah. with him a lot more because his, his dialogue was hilarious he's wonderful yeah but I see what else he's gonna be able to whip up and what other weapons you're gonna get and how that's gonna play out yeah, yeah I mean there was a, a big discussion uh, Vince Napoli and George Maul were uh, the first two to kind of prototype the axe right and they had initially put it on a, a button 
separate button to recall, and then I think they were like, oh, it's it's fun to actually just have it get recalled while you're pressing your attack buttons, yeah. right? And I found that as like, oh, it just it, it felt like I was randomly calling it back. Oh. I didn't feel in control. I was like, There's really? There's purpose. Yeah. There's intent yes. when I use It was my for it. control. Right? I was yeah. like, I can choose to delay it however yeah. long I want. So I was like, man, I love this on a separate button. So we went back and forth for quite a while trying to keep it on that one button. Yeah. Uh, and eventually got to the point where everything started to click. And man... I think I annoyed the hell out of the team because I would go through levels. We'd do these big reviews with people in the 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 conference room, and I'd just be sitting there throwing the axe at everything. I'd just be throwing it at a tree and a, no collision there, right? And I'd just yeah, be pointing yeah, out yeah. all the places that don't have collision, which is just like Picard face bomb for everybody. Uh, but it's just, it was the satisfying thing. To me, that is that tactile, like, immediacy that I got from doing the jump. Because I would be mm. one of those annoying people who runs through Counter Strike jumping constantly, which is, I guess, everybody because they all jump there. Yeah. And it's the same thing in God of War. I'm jumping through all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was those delightful moments of what you're talking about of like, yeah, it's the intent to it. And the first time I had thrown it and then I'm brawling with some guys and some guys running at me and I called it back and it hit him from behind and then went into my hand. It's like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of then throwing it, fighting this guy, getting it, hitting this guy. Like, and. It was, you know, I think for us in particular, you know, we're doing this MCU show where we're going through all the Marvel movies, like yeah. having watched so many Thor movies now and seen him in so many things to have it be like, it's Mjolnir, but it's got a blade on it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yes, this is way awesome. Yeah, so the, the ability to feel like your own sort of creativity is driving it. Yeah. It's huge. And yeah. Right? And that, that's never what, had that in a God of War game. And that's how it becomes agency and it becomes jazz to an extent, right? Of like, yeah, yes. Kevin and I are going to play through this game that is not the dirty way of saying it, but is linear and we're all on the same path and getting the same story. But yeah. the way I fight this guy, the way I take out this yep. guy and the way this battle plays out is going to be different for each one of us. Yep. Especially and when you get to the end, like your loadout for Kratos, your right? loadout for Atreus is going to look completely different and that from was, everybody else. I mean, for me being such a cosmetic nerd, when it was, we got to the blacksmith whose name I already forgot again. Brock. Brock. When we got to him and he's getting on, but you got jump in there and you see the two outfits immediately available for right. my Kratos. It was like, Wow! Yeah, like yeah. And I'm like that one looks cooler, but I want the damage for the yeah. <laughs> for, for for this. Um, you got a Sophie's choice. Going I got on like there. 40 minutes left of this demo. I yeah. want all the damage I can get out of it and run that way. Yeah, that was that was a big discussion. And this back to the, the the board thing of like we had made a rule set early on that Kratos stayed looking exactly like Kratos. We never manipulate sort of the look unless we had established a very specific like when he added the golden fleece. Yeah, yeah. that was limited, but we wouldn't give the player the control over it, uh, and. I was like, we really need to loosen that. Like, I, I love being able to customize yeah, something. Yeah, 100%. You know, like, I love feeling like I have a little bit of a reflection of me in the game, yeah. right? And I feel like It's that people, agency, right? Yeah. You want to own it and you want to have That's a part of it. That's the beautiful thing about games is that yeah. we're, we're connected to it a lot more. It's not a passive thing. I'm not just watching it, right? Yeah. I'm participating and I'm controlling it, so I should have as much control as possible. Uh, something, it didn't strike me when... Uh, it, it struck me when I was playing it that it was something special, but I couldn't put my finger on it for a while. There's a little bit of Super Mario Odyssey in this game to me Oh, in the way that when we were talking about Odyssey last year, we would talk about the fact that if you were going and you looked left and you saw a platform or something there, it was there for a reason. It wasn't just put there. Like if you're coming up, there's the door and there's extra space over here. Why is there extra? Okay. A, a coin pops or whatever. Yeah. I had to stop while we were playing the game from drifting off the main course because it was that thing of like a trace like all right we're going this way dad come on and, and then i would look around and be like well no we're not like i <laughs> i need to know what's down there by the water and up there and yeah. then figuring out like how to you know like i was getting to it before the game was even telling you like where to throw stuff and how yeah. to open doors and stuff and so to go through there and find the new chest to go through there and find the super special chests that have the symbols on them that i have to then find in the world to break i was yeah. like Wow, like that's awesome. Like, you know what I mean? In terms yeah. of the TLC, the the vast scope of the game, and then the, back to the thing of, yeah, it's linear. You're going to go from this. We're going to get the same right. story beats, but is Kevin going to go off and investigate all that? And granted, I'm going to do it for trophies, yep. but is he going to go off and do all this different stuff and try to find that and make my Kratos more powerful? And all, you know, the the currency I was finding where I'm like, oh, I'm really going to, when I get here, I mean, I'm smashing everything on screen, right. obviously, because yeah, I just want to yeah. make sure I can get there and get the best stuff possible. That's the, the, the sort of rewarding curiosity yeah you know this like aspect of gaming that lets you sort of embrace discovery and feel like 
you're the pioneer, right? Yeah. You're the person going out and finding these things. And it's, there's this, this like endorphin rush of satisfaction of feeling like, wow. Yeah, that like, I didn't waste my time, right? right? I didn't go down here and find cool. a dead end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, I mean, you're right. Like everything in the world is there with a purpose. Every piece of writing on the walls mm -hmm. is, is actually old Norse. So we, we've written things out, translated it to Old Norse, and then translated the Old Norse to the Elder Futhark runes. Okay. So literally everything around the world like, is, is, is telling a story, yeah. right? But also is there to entice you to go, maybe a few steps off the path, you're going to find something fun. Maybe uh, down a hallway, you're going to find something fun. Maybe you're going to discover an entirely different level, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. it's like, to me, that, that's why I play games, right? Yeah. I play games because I feel like I can get immersed in a world that has been crafted by people who really care, right? Who want to make me lose sight of the real world for, uh, you know, 10 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours. Something I've been saying now on Twitter since, you know, the preview went live on Games Daily, but talking to fans about it, right, is a compliment that I never would have thought to say to you or what I have thought to say in the preview, right? Mm. But I think needs to be said now with hindsight and how people are acting. Playing this game, I never thought of The Last of Us. Because oh. I, th I think so many people, I remember it reveal of just being, oh, well, it's, yeah, it's yeah. The Last of Us with Kratos and this kid or whatever. And then when the preview started posting, so many of the reactions from people were like, I'm not interested. It just looks like Last of Us. Right. And I was like, oh, right. Like, no. Yeah. Playing this, I never thought about yeah. that. It wasn't the same experience at all. Like, were you expecting people from a reveal to now to be hung up on that in places? You know, initially, uh, no. I was a little surprised by that simply because it was not really in our headspace. And yeah. when people started saying like last of us of war and stuff yeah, like that, right, you're just right, like, right. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, but I mean, it really is that surface level of saying like, because there is an older man and a yeah. child and a close up camera is yeah. last of us. And I was like, okay, like to me, it's such a phenomenal game. Like, it's not ever Your bad game? to oh, be, uh, huh? Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, Very no good. But it's not like that hack Neil Druckmann's game. Right. That, oh, Neil is a wonderful human being. I know, I like him a lot. He likes us. So you're always, yeah. So he, anyway, he is, uh, or sorry, Last of Us mm -hmm. is uh, a good comparison in the sense that, hey, we're in, in the league with a very, very, very good game. Yeah. But it really is the speed of the two games, sort of every, I think, every aspect, aside from having a companion and, yeah. and a close-up camera. Um you know, the way we handle the story of fatherhood is very different. Yeah, to uh, say the least. <laughs> yeah, very, very different. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting thing because I had a, a journalist in Madrid actually say a similar thing. That after they finished it, he said, I do think it's kind of unfair of us as journalists to use it as a comparison. We struggled because you didn't give us a lot yeah. to actually, you know, describe it accurately but after playing it he's like yeah i kind of feel like i do it a disservice because then people assume going in oh i'm gonna get last of us and it's a very different game right whether that's a positive or a negative to them and i was like oh that's kind of cool like no uh, yeah and i was surprised when it popped up of people reading previews or watching the video and, and that's what they were thinking because right. playing it it feels so much like a matured God of War, it doesn't. It, I'm not playing this at all and feeling like, oh, right, this is a relationship like I had with Ellie. Right. No, this I'm is not. A control C, Control V. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No point in time is that what I'm taking right. away from it. Yeah. I do like the reset era. A whole series of posts where everybody just started saying, like, literally every game under the sun. Oh, this is so like Tetris. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is completely The Sims. Does everybody not see this? It's totally The Sims. I'm just like, all right, that's funny. Yeah, like, it's gonna be interesting for everybody to get there and play it because I think yeah. that's the big part of it. I mean honestly that's what i've sort of always thought through this is that one it's playing the whole thing like being able to play the entire game i think that truly is the experience people need to have like it's i i struggle with the idea of ever showing anything of it because i hate spoilers sure. I, I, I hate seeing a trailer and feeling like i don't need to see the movie you literally show me yeah. every good thing about the movie yeah. uh but also that first experience right that 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 kind of aha you get in a really great television show a really great game yeah. that kind of gives you the oh my god the eco reveal the 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 shadow reveal uh, i mean even the last of us the reveal that they had uh amazing right god of war one the reveal right i figure i can actually say what that one is i don't know right? if you, if you, somebody's probably somebody saying. probably hasn't played it so cover your earmuffs 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 people. everybody uh the 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 reveal of his his, his wife and child's ashes right was That's why was just yeah. like wow you know and and i can't imagine kind of knowing that in advance right oh, like no going way, into yeah. it and feeling like oh it's spoiled and and so much of the game isn't just 
those kinds of reveals. Like, it's not about just a story reveal. There are moments in there that are not story related that it's like, if you experience it the first time, it's awesome. Well, that's right? why I've danced around it the best I can, right? You know what I mean? Like, because it was, you know, you guys asked, obviously, when we left, like, don't spoil the game. Don't give a blow by right. blow uh, account. And I'm like, of course, of course. Because you're notorious for that. Like, that people, like, they, I mean, I reenacted there are, like, the last wanted of posters exactly, on the yeah, wall exactly. that's like, you know, Craig Miller, spoiler. Get him out of here. Yeah. But, the thing, you know, when I was I did the preview on Games Daily, I mentioned a, f- a few things that I was like, "This isn't a spoiler." And the amount of people were writing like, "Oh man, you said this person that's probably going to be the boss," and then and I was like, "Well, I kind of think we could have guessed that person was going to be involved." But okay, yeah. cool. But you need to understand that I've saved moments for you there. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That superhero fight I keep talking about. You haven't spoiled anything, man. Thank I think it was much. good. Thank yeah, you. It was very positive, and I think it hopefully well, that's gets why you people liked it excited. A lot, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you said something shitty, I totally would have been like, "You spoiled everything." You would have canceled yeah. this interview. Yeah, You're not coming like, here at yeah, all. Yeah, hashtag yeah, exactly. cancel my pre-order, Greg. <laughs> You'd get it going. You cancel this right. lovely PlayStation Four Pro. Oh, this thing is beautiful. Talk to me about this because this is something that comes up all the time on Games Daily. What is your involve? What is a studio's involvement in a PlayStation Four Pro Special Edition? Is that do they act, bounce anything off you, or is it literally? We're uh, pretty actively involved in literally everything. Really? We are obsessive compulsive control freaks at Santa Monica. Yeah, uh, you know, I say we, but it's probably me. That's, yeah, oh that's yeah, a lot you're like just that. the only control freak. Yeah. But I, I, I have some pretty intensely talented artists that have very strong opinions and make everything look great. So I trust them implicitly. Uh, and this thing, we started on it like well over a year ago and oh, we were right. in the middle of some of our hardest times to try to get things done so we were we were pretty actively involved in it but the 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 hardware group that actually does this too is just incredibly talented so yeah. you know it really was just everybody supporting each other to come up with something that's awesome cuz i we've always wanted to know cuz it seems like some of them look really good some are like not so sure about it. and it's like where's the disconnect and then yeah. i think for yours in particular it's one of those I know there, it was a mixed bag of reactions for it, but yeah. I think seeing it up close, I like it more. And then it's also, I think, when people play through the game and understand the symbols more and how they all work in the game yeah. and what that means, I think that'll mean more as well. It's also worth pointing out the light-up PlayStation sa- sacred symbols are mine. That does not come with the special edition. Yeah, that's 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 just not me. with it. No, no. Special can't. swag just for you. Thank you. There was going to be, uh, initially, uh, we kind of went overboard. So there's all these options, and it's really just like kid in a candy store. We ticked all the boxes. For so, the pro? Yeah, for oh. this one. And it was like, it was never going to happen. It had like, like bells and w- It had like a like Kratos face. runes on the front and stuff like ah. that. And it was just like ridiculous because yeah. we were... It was, so it's a know, $1,000 special like edition. $47,000 for this thing, <laughs> right? You can buy a Tesla or the PS4 Pro. So where are you at right now? Close, we're a month away from release. Yes. Like, what does that do to you mentally? Like, why are you is life getting back to normal? Is it still crazy? The game's gold. No. I'm assuming people are still doing day one patch buggy things. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean now I that's official code word for what you guys do. Yeah. Day one patch buggy patch things. buggy thingies. Uh, yeah, that's the the tech terms. And yeah, we're still working on that stuff. I'm still kind of traveling around talking to people. Sure getting people excited about the game yeah uh things will slow down for me in may probably beginning of may is when i'm gonna fall off the edge of the earth like richard simmons you know like disappear completely okay uh is richard simmons missing at the moment yeah did you not know that no i don't know 2015 man i just heard this podcast and it's amazing he's Uh, been missing since 2015 yeah not like legitimately missing but like he removed himself from the public eye huh okay Uh, and i was just like that's fascinating yeah i'm like i I I haven't heard about richard simmons in a while yeah right well let's check out this podcast it's pretty which podcast interesting it's Finding Richard Simmons or something like that. There's a podcast. I thought you meant like there was an episode of like no. the Joe Rogan show about no. this. You're, it's a like sh- a full on series about finding Richard Simmons. Wow. And I was captivated with it. Is it, is it does it end? Do they find him in the end? I feel like they. You know, well, they're only on like episode six. And I haven't even gotten nice. there. Okay, uh, okay, but, okay. you know, it's captivating. Sure. Very good. Right? Sure, sure, it's sure, the, sure, sure. It's of the caliber of like S Town and, and uh, that, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, see, Cereal? Nancy Jr. one? No, no, no. Crime Town. Oh, okay. Have you heard that one? No, I don't know. About the, the mayor from Rhode Island? Oh, my God. That's so good. Okay. You have to listen. All right. Oh, Crime so Town? Good. Crime Town. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Kevin, make a note for me. Make Slack me the word Crime Write this Town. down. He's like, no. Sl- Kevin, you get nothing. Kevin, please. You get nothing. Please. He's flicking me off, literally. Right. He's a crazy man. Um, You want to know my biggest disappointment with God of War from the preview event? Uh, Something else I haven't said. Yes. And I know you have yes, an answer please. for it because somebody asked you in an interview later on about it. Oh, fantastic. Photo mode. 
Photo mode. I was playing the game. I hit pause. I went in there looking for photo mode because I got like so hooked. On, I was hooked on it after yeah. in Horizon. Yeah. Like when Horizon dropped, I, I've never given photo mode the time of day. Yeah. But like Horizon, I was like, this is beautiful. And I did like a whole bunch of shots put them on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, content. Check I'm making content. Out. And I was like, I'll do this for God of War because it's just as pretty. Yeah. If not prettier. And I'll jump in there. Nothing. Yeah. Why well, do you hate photo mode? I love photo mode. Yeah. We're, you know, we have, we have every, like I said, we were doing everything at the exact same time. <clears throat> so. There, there is definitely a desire for the photo mode. We just got to make sure everything's dialed in. Okay. So we just didn't want you to play with it. Thank actually. you. Thank there you. was a, there was a little jokes on you. Was, I got a phone with a camera, so I can right. take the photos so you off already the took screen. The photos, yeah. and then you you totally posted those on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's good. That's how I'll do it. Smart. Thank you. Thank covert. you. Covert. Next time, don't tell me though, because then it's really covert. How far photo mode? Come on. Day uh, one patch. Is that what you're bugging right now? You bugging? I a photo don't mode? know. Uh, I mean, I do know, but I need a firm answer from the programmer. So I hear you. I hear you. my goal, you put it be, this way, I can okay. say this. I can say my goal is that people have it when they, they get the game. Okay. Like, That's good. That's like good. See? Day one, like they can there get it. Know. Like it's super exciting. You but, can start doing the media molecule thing yeah. when they're like, when's PlayStation VR going to work for right. uh, Dreams? They're like, n- day one, two. Yeah. Day 1.5, day two. So yeah. <laughs> like not like it's not happening right away, but right. almost right away. Like we're working on it. That's but it's all, it's uh, honestly, it's all dependent on making sure first and foremost the stability of the sure. game and the experience is awesome. So that takes the priority, and I will always sort of push that over any other features. Question for you now. All right. This is, a, this is a weird time capsule question. All right. Today we did Kind of Funny Games Daily. Nice. Jason Trier was on yes. it. Yes. One of the stories was, of course, God of War has gone gold. To which Jason Trier laughed and said, that doesn't mean anything anymore. <laughs> does, go- does going gold mean anything in 2018? It... Because if, you, if you're if you're somebody at home who doesn't follow the video game terminology or hasn't heard the term before, going gold is your master. This is what right. we're sending to it's what PlayStation, who the will then print it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It goes to manufacturing, so that is the the thing that makes the physical disc. So it totally means something there. I think it means a lot more to us as developers, right? Yeah. Because it is a psychological milestone mm-hmm. that kind of just says like, okay, you know, done. And it used to mean. You don't touch it anymore. Yeah, it's done, done. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, pre-internet connected everything. It was like, that's it. Like, out the door and you just have to hope everything is great. And now we can actually continue to support it. And if anything slipped through the cracks, right, that says, yeah. oh, we didn't find this weird, obscure thing that happens when you do these 5,000 steps. Well, cool, we can fix that, right? Okay. Like, I think I think it, 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 it diminishes its meaning just a tiny bit, but I think in a positive way, right? Because it continues to allow you to make the game better. My final question. Final question. Before I inevitably think of something else is your Okay, good. Here. You should, yeah. When you're d- set off to make this game, when you make this game, are you thinking in terms of, I'm making a trilogy, I'm telling this one story here, what is your vision for where God of War is now? Because obviously there was a whole saga before, yeah. which, you, you know, came from the success of the first one. What do you think of your God of War? It's interesting, the first one... Uh I think there was this belief of like, oh, they're going to let us make another one. Uh, <laughs> right? Like there was the desire to have this story continue to go. But uh, I have thought about it a lot more than on the previous games. Yeah. Like on the, the second one, I kind of mapped out two and three at the same time, mm-hmm. which is why it ended the way that it did. It, like I, I knew where I wanted to go with it. Uh, so I sort of already worked that way anyway. I, I can't limit myself to the sure. one. I'm, I, uh, I have a problem. Oh, and no. I should just be able to focus, You're too but good I can't. A creator, right. man. I wouldn't say that. I would Building say that. Building a universe I would say over I have here. Focus issues. Corey extended universe, <laughs> right? Right. It's the the CCU. Right? <laughs> uh, so, I think uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that there's a number on the the number of games, but to me, I've written something that I think extends beyond the way that this game ends. Uh, definitely. Presents the extension beyond. Beyond. Uh, beyond. Look at that. I'm and beyond. That. There you go. Good. I want to talk to you about so many specifics from the story, but I don't want to spoil the game for people. So uh-huh. I'll do it when the mic's cut. All right. And then I'm looking at Aram now, looking him in the eye. Before he drops off the face of the earth, can he come back for a spoiler cast? Can we have... Because oh, Tim I wants totally to do one do for that. where we all play I and just come totally up and just... Do that. Okay, cool. That would be wonderful. That needs to be our exclusive, so no one else. All right. If and, No, don't do that face. No. <laughs> Think of the game spot. The number of spoiler casts that we've been <laughs> requested on is pretty high. I'm like the first one. I'm right. sure. No, no, no. Right. I no. mean, there's so many. Oh, okay. Uh, I've never even heard of a spoiler cast. So I'll you marathon through it real quick. The whole thing? Yeah. Exactly. Just there give it to go. me now. I'll play it right now. 
Right. And we bring him back next week. You know, you make a persuasive argument. Thank you. We're going to just give it to you now. Thank, there we right. go. See? There and coincidentally, go. there is a disc inside of this place. Oh, this runs the right. Gold Master disc. You held it has a, a 47 key combination mm. that you have to figure out. If you figure it out, you can play it. Okay, cool. It's all yours. It's all in Norse symbols. It is in Norse symbols, all yes. Right, cool. Which there aren't even 47 Elder Futhark, so that doesn't make <laughs> sense at all. language, you know what That I mean? does not work for me. No? Okay. Corey, thank you for coming up. Thank you for having me, sir. This is wonderful. Thank you for making this game. I'm looking forward to playing it. Oh, thank you. God of War, April 20, 420, bro. Uh, then now I guess we're going back to the games cast now. See what Jared's been playing or something. I don't know. Kevin, what are you eating? A bagel? Pizza? Yeah. A pizza bagel? <laughs> when pizza's not a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. That is the slogan for bagel, bagel bites. bites. Yeah. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That's what we do Just here. Bringing back a little of my childhood right there. All right. Back to Jared. <laughs> thank you, Corey. I can't believe he confirmed God of War in 18 part game. Great wow. job. Corey. 18 part. Eight, Gordon eight, Freeman confirmed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so much for t being part of this crazy ass episode of the Gamescast. I was very happy to be a part of this. Episode. It's always a pleasure. Thank it's always a pleasure me. to be here. Yeah. Uh, again, rest in peace, Tim Gettys, wherever your soul may rest now. He's at the barber. He just is at the barber. He's, he's, the barber. Barber. Yeah. he's been there he's, all week. He's sitting right there. Oh, right. And his hair is not cut. So that's going to be, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, remember if you want to support the show, patreon.com slash kind of funny games, you can go there, give us some amount of money, get some version of the show free <laughs> early. Uh, if you want to wait though and have the free version, you can catch it each and every Monday. Uh, podcast services around the globe, youtube.com slash kind of funny games. No matter where you get it. Thank you so much for your support. Remember, we love you. Hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, click here to subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny. Click there to subscribe to the normal kind of funny page where you get the MCU in view. Click there to support us on Patreon and click over here for whatever Kevin wants to put here.